He's gonna break. <laughs> okay, so I shot the entire reaction to uh, Arcane, but because of many um, reasons, including sponsorship approvals, editing, and life work uh, stuff in terms of my actual filmmaking job, has prevented me from um, being on point. But all of that is fixed, and actually today I was editing episode six to come out, and then I saw your guys' comments about the new World of Warcraft uh, trailer that just dropped, and I, I said to myself, you know what, the boys are awesome, they can be a bit more patient, a few more days, and the rest of the arcane episodes are gonna come out on freaking time, but let's just enjoy a new World of Warcraft cinematic on time, like it came out today and tomorrow, which I hope this is gonna be edited by, I got this, it's gonna be done. So guys, let's get to it. I have another thing to share with you, I've been working really hard to for something amazing, I will actually say it's the most amazing thing and most like child, inner child kid project of mine. I really wanna freaking share it with you, but I wanna wake at the same time because I'm gonna release it, the first thesis on my Instagram, link in the description below. Um, but uh, you know what? I'm just gonna show something really quick. Hit the Instagram, guys, hit the follow there. Some sick art styles and project announcements are coming. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Oh, also, shout out to uh, the Creatix store if you want LUTs or other cool filmmaking stuff. Hit that store down below as well. With that said, let's fire up YouTube and check out World of Warcraft Dragonflight Cinematic. So, YouTube, full screen. Yes, it has dragons. And one, two, three. Oh my god. Did they just do the trailer before the trailer? Blizzard, come on, have faith in us. It's a bit loud, eh? 10,000 years ago. Man, we haven't done a World of Warcraft for so long. It cries out in pain. We must go to its aid. Greece. We entrust our ancestral home to you, the Watchers. A portal. Okay. You will feel our return in the waking of the land. Are they petrified? Then you must light the beacon of tear hold. Lest the path home be lost to us forever. Let's go. Okay, so that was 10,000 years ago. Is this now? Yes, I freaking knew it, boys. The Awakening. Oh, I was gonna say, what if someone gets knackered? How big are they? Oh, is he like the only one that has to bring their ring to Mordor? It's the same thing. It's just all those years after. Oh, it's his family. For my family. That's all you had to do. Turn the thing. 
Like, come on. Let's go. Oh, he's breaking apart. Let's go, boy. Put the materia together. Yes! Oh, that's a sick shot. Sick man, it's oh, he's gonna break, he's gonna shatter. Oh, oh. oh. he was say, Oh, that's sick! Oh, let's go, dragon. I did not expect that actually. That's pretty cool. Dragon flight. The world is here. But her fate is yet uncertain. Death wing. <coughs> Oh, that's a sick shot. We shall be Azeroth's protectors once again. Here, the new age of dragons, dragons. shall begin. I will learn more. That was sick. Okay, first things first, now that we're back on YouTube, like this cinematic, like this video as well, guys, it always helps. And uh, what did you guys think? No, why did you go to the next one? Autoplay, just stay for a second, mate. We have things to discuss, YouTube. Just can't relax, Jesus. Oh. Guys, what did you think of the cinematic? Let me know down in the comment section below. It was pretty sick, it was very, Light-hearted, I would say, you know what I mean? Usually just like orcs and death and power and war. Um, this was uh, quite colorful as well. Like the color grading they chose was quite, um, quite light-hearted, I would say. Um, really cool, I'm just so excited to watch another Warcraft cinematic. It's been quite a while. So um, as always guys, in part one, we react to the cinematic and part two, we dive back in to have a cool discussion about filmmaking techniques, visual effects, and anything we can discuss about this awesomeness. So let's jump right back, back to the, I'm gonna skip the freaking trailer before the trailer. That is just like, this is where we are now. Like you release a trailer and you need to show the audience, hey, just, just watch the whole thing. Some really cool stuff are gonna happen. Uh, sad, but oh well, it does work. Hence why everyone does it now. Classic introduction of the Blizzard logo from Darkness with the introduction of sound as well. And we have that nice whipping kind of almost like brass, like coming in and the logo appears in synchronicity. Comes out as well. 10,000 years ago. As always, guys, we've talked about this in multiple Filmmaker Reacts episodes, basically. Um, you have two ways of starting something, either close up to intrigue the audience or far away as a wide to establish the scene. They started with the orb really close up and they actually used the luminance of it to transition from perfect white back to a more exposed image, which is a trick uh, usually used as well. You either start from, you know, completely black or completely white, and here they have a nice drone-like shot to establish the space. And actually, it, it tells quite a few things, like it shows, you know, a beacon of light on mainland, you have the sea, and then far in the horizon, you have very dark clouds, 
and almost ominous green light thunder storm happening but everything is very nicely composed guys a lot of times I get the question how do you make something look cinematic and the truth is it's not just one thing but you start with framing, composition, camera movement, color, what subject you put in front or animate in a scene, um, the sound design and all of those things together make something hopefully compelling. I just want to say this is quite easily done in live action because we're wo working with a very simple drone scene and far in the background you would put, you would compose in um, this kind of like thing. So if you wanted to do something similar, fairly straightforward thing to do. Just have a drone shot, track it in, bring your VFX project uh, assets and compose them in and then, ooh, easy peasy. We must go to its aid. We entrust our ancestral home. So I'm not sure who's talking and that kind of, uh, for me personally as a viewer, when you have a narration, it kind of pulls me out because if your main character is narrating and then they bring it back to the character actually speaking, sitting on the bench, that's kind of cool. You know what I mean? But when you have narration, but I don't know who's talking, it pulls me out a tiny bit. To you, the watchers. So they turn off the light by splitting the orb in half. And there was an interesting way of showing this actually. If you guys check the orb out, when the orb is full, its exposure in terms of luminance is very high, like it's almost blown out. You know what I mean? Like if you pay attention, the sky is nicely exposed, um, but the orb itself is quite blown out, but also they've included artistically a lens flare uh, now lens flares occur when you know light hits the lens and then it creates diffracts light so here it would it's a it's a cool way of showing you because uh, i do this a lot in my things as well i will put something like an optical flare to spice it up a bit and it's interesting that as the orb splits apart that flare also goes out and that in combination with the exposure dialing down and you can actually see the rock itself it's a cool way because uh, this would be the exact way uh, we would do this for live action whether it was like a hot display coming up or another orb or anything really cool see and now you can really and clearly see the orb and you have the ominous clouds coming up this is another very classic framing of a character overlooking something it might be a city after a zombie outbreak it might be after a battle and you see the chaos and aftermath of it usually you put them on the side in if you segment the screen um your frame in thirds so you have a center third and then one on the right and one on the left you put them in one of the corners to give visual space to the audience to overlook what the character is looking again composition key i love this one i don't know what it is about like clouds mist and um illuminating a subject as a silhouette you know what i mean like this is a silhouette basically because the light is be in front of them and we're looking from the back and this is something so cinematic about this image because we have a center um center um character to like visually um aim us but then we're overlooking what he's looking and just the artistic take on this is just amazing i love the color grade as well how we go from a vibrant green and warm kind of tone to this clouds and you desaturate it and you start having these teal undertones and everything ah oh, just amazing <laughs> You sick. What is that? That looks like a sick fortress, man. Oh wow, they're quite big actually. Now that I see them in relation to the trees, they're quite uh massive. Who <laughs> feel our return in the waking of the land? Okay, so they sleep. Then you must 
tonight to be... Again, narration. I know that they're giving exposition, but it's a bit on the... It's a bit too much. I like how they animated the guys, because basically they're made out of rock, apparently. So instead of having a smooth motion, they're having a rock-like motion. They're like... You know how, like, if you have a smooth ball and you roll it, it's going to smoothly roll versus a rock is going to be like, clue, 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 clue. Perfect explanation, Chris. Well done. Um, that's how that reminds me. It's like... Mm -mm -mm. Cool touch, though. I like how they transition this. I would actually expect them to start with all like the, the moss and everything that has formed because I don't exactly know why they made the choice to go from like, you know, the past which they have already established and shown while well, this was not... Oh, come on, you do. How many frames back do I need to go? There. Perfect. I would just start with the moss because, you know, the audience would get that time has gone by because that is a very uh, nice visual way of showing it there. So we got back and forth, back and forth. So th they introduce a lot of more of mist, but the most important thing is the texture on the statue. It's like kind of shiny and nice and well preserved and then it's like boom. Yeah. They also, ooh, interesting. He also has like, um, you know, uh, rock... I don't know how to call it. No. Doom. That's really cool. I like the color grading from the sea and the teal luminance. That's really cool. Oh, see how vibrant the water is now? I wonder why. Hmm. Anyways. He goes back. This is straight out of freaking um, Lord of the Rings when Frodo and Sam, when Sam had to, <laughs> spoiler alert, had to carry Frodo in to throw the ring. That's really cool. Again, we have a nice cinematic contrast. When you put um, something like orange red lava, with um, teal and blue hues of the background, it's just instantly magic because those contrasting colors uh, complement each other amazingly. And that's a, that's another thing, for example. Uh, how do you make something look cinematic? Well, if you have a flat image in terms of colors and nothing, you know, contrasts each other, what are you gonna color grade? Everything is the same. You know what I mean? Um, so you either need um, light contrast for example the scene that we saw with the sea and the lights and the clouds because that didn't really have color contrast but it had light contrast and that could be very handy when color grading and shaping light to really bring out the cinematic feel but here for example we don't have a massive light source but we do have color contrast which helps <laughs> it's like I'm the last one of them. I need to complete my mission. So he goes up. Nice build up. A slow breather moment. Did you guys notice how like they build up the music and they build up the music and they build up the music? You can't constantly build up, so you need to bring it back down. Take a moment of breath. And then go back up, because when you think about it, this is also what we do, like, you know, we have to do something, and it's hard, we like, just take a moment to, like, let's go. You know what I mean? This is the same applies to actually um, building a narrative and, like, structuring it. It's like, you're building up the scene and the epicness, but you have to take a step back, chill for a second, and then build it back up again. And this is what this moment serves like. The decision. Boom. And then we go back on. Let's go. Bam, 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 bam. Again, another one. Another one. Boom. Really cool detail. I like this beam. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Excuse me, guys, but when I see uh, this uh, cinematics, they are usually have really cool ideas for visual effects. And that's how I started. I started like as a kid in my backyard with a broomstick pretending to be a lightsaber. So I learned how to make lightsaber first and then what uh, cameras and lenses and camera movement did. 
So it will they will always play a key part in my heart when it comes to like this. So when I see this, I'm like, yeah, great shot and everything, but I'm like, hmm, that beam of light and energy, how would we replicate this? Really cool. Boom! Very cool shot. That. That is really sick. I, lo I love this shot, how they go through the orb energy, pulling back as he struggles to close it. That's a great shot. Boom! Energy beam! Ignite! Those are some really cool shots. When a character struggles, I really like what they did here. They basically started him pulling back, but you cannot, because they want to extend the time, to extend the struggle, they cannot keep showing you a close-up, so they cut to a nice wide of the move happening, and that gives the the director or the creators basically time to really emphasize the struggle and the importance of the scene by cutting from a close-up to a wide and then to a close-up again. <laughs> We go really close, really close to really emphasize the expression and the struggle. You know, it's kind of like that last, like... I love this. I love how they basically, again, like I said at the beginning, you know, it's everything. It's sound, it's visuals, it's colors, everything. It's a flash of light. I love how they cut the sound and cut everything. And with a flash of light, boom. The character falls back and if you this reminds me of again spoiler alert for some reason but in harry potter when dumbledore dies and snape does the spell it's kind of like a very similar thing the spell happens we have a burst of light the burst of shock and then he gets boom thrown from the balcony and we have the same kind of like whoop. this is actually the absence of sound this is very dramatic whoop. And this shot as well is very classic. This kind of almost slow motion of the character falling in limbo before they hit their imminent doom. Because this is not real time. See, again, what, use slow motion to extend time because you need to show the significance of the scene. But it has to be used right, and here it is, because it just gives a bit more time to be like, oh no, he's gonna like sacrifice himself, basically. And the dragons are here! And everything is colorful again. And we have a sick sequence. And they all come from the light, of course. I say, I love this scene. Where is it? There is this. This. You need to show it. Freaking cool uh, dragon shot, man. Like a dragon trick and then like a dragon suspend in mid-air while they dive. You just gotta do it. Boom! Together, we shall be Azeroth's protectors once again. All oh, the dragons were speaking. God damn it. Here, the new age of dragons. And of course you need a freaking sick dragon roar, roar. so let's go. Shall begin. Guys, notice they open with a flash of light 10,000 years ago and they closed with a flash of light to the actual expansion. Gotta love symmetry, mate. Symmetry? Yeah, sure. Ah, oh, sick. Well, that was it, guys. Uh, epic. Uh, like I said, next episode, which is coming very, very soon, in just a few days. Follow up to Arcane and the rest of the episodes are going to come in a timely fashion versus what has been happening for the past few <clears throat> situational months. Um, yeah, that was it guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought. I'll catch you on the next one. As always, check on Instagram guys. It's gonna be sick. You gotta trust me on that one and hit a follow. I'll catch you on the next one. And until then, stay awesome and creative.